Welcome along to the final video in our model train series where we finally get to assemble all the parts into this 3D working model. Okay, there is all the many hours of hard work finally paying off. You can even get these wheels, give them a bit of a turn as well to make it look a little bit more, I don't know, a bit more realistic. Okay, so that looks really cool. Let's get to it. So we're going to go to our file menu today and we're going to start a new document. Make sure in the metric templates and we're looking in the second option here the assembly options this time i'm just looking for a standard millimeter document okay so once you've got the standard millimeter document double click on it and you're ready to roll first thing you need to do is you need to go up to the place option here okay just click on place and i want you to look for the train body okay hopefully as i said in the previous videos you've saved all your parts into the same folder Okay, I've got a model train folder here, and I've got my body that I'm going to bring in first of all. You'll see it appear on the page here, just click once, we'll get a little bit smaller, and then press escape to get out of it. Okay, once you put that body in, I want you to right click on it, and I just want you to right, uh, select grounded. It means it's stuck in place there and it's not going to move anywhere. I might just change this home view around a little bit zoom in a bit here okay so that's the view I want as my home view so I'm going to right click on that little house there and just choose set current view as home and just choose the fixed distance okay I'm going to be doing a lot of swinging around on this train later on so if it ever gets stuck and confused like that I'll just hit the home button and it will take me back to this nice view alrighty so the first thing we want to stick on I think it's going to be the wheels so we want the wheels to go in these holes over here. So let's go to place. And we're going to select the wheel. And we're going to click four times. We're going to go one, two, two, three, and four. And then press escape. Okay, we've now got four wheels sitting around our train. Okay, the other thing we need is the axle peg. That's going to plug, oh, basically connect these wheels to the train body. So go back up to place. Look for the axle peg. And you need four of them, so just click next to the wheels, four axle pegs, and then press escape once you've got them all in. Okay. Now to attach these wheels to the train, you need to go up to the constraint option here. Okay. And first of all, we're going to attach these pegs to the wheels. Alrighty. So we need to make sure that, if I just swing it around a bit, the thread is going on this flat side of the wheel because that's what's going to be pushed against the train body. The more fancy side of the wheel is the outer side of the wheel. Okay, and that's what's going to be seen from the outside of the train. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to constrain up here and a little dialog box appears. I want you to go all the way across to this fourth option that says insert. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit on this first screw here. I'm going to select this circle underneath basically the head of the screw peg I'm going to click on it then I'm going to click on the inner circle here of the wheel okay and what that has done it has put the screw or inserted it into the wheel click apply go and do that for the other four wheels now okay so it's going to involve a little bit of fiddling around to get this right but click on the underside of the screw there and then the inside of the wheel Okay, make sure, as I said before, the thread is poking through this flat side of the wheel. Let's come down here to this one. Oops, we'll apply that first. Then we can go to the next one and put it in. And then apply that. And we'll go to this next one and stick it in there. Apply that. Let's close that off for a moment. Let's go back to my home view for a sec. And you can see now we've got all four wheels with the axle pegs running through them. Next job is to get those pegs into those holes there. Okay, so it's done it in a fairly similar way. I'm just going to scroll up a little bit like this so you can see it a bit more 3D. So we're going to go to Constrain. And the same box pops up. So we go across again to the fourth option, the Insert option. And I'll start with this wheel here. What we need to do is select the part that comes through the wheel. Oh, geez, I'm having a hard time selecting it. There it is there. 
So select that part that comes through the wheel and then just simply select the hole. And that attaches it to the train. You can click apply. Let's try the same for this one. Grab that part of the screw and put it in the hole. Easy. Let's go around this side. Just apply that too, by the way. So we want to grab this part of the screw and put it into there. Apply it. Again, grab this part of the screw that's just coming through the back of the um, wheel there. Sometimes hard to find. There it is. And then put it into that hole there. Apply that, close the box, and you've now got your four wheels on the train. You can even pick them up and give them a bit of a turn just to make sure that they're working all right. Okay, I'll just give them a bit of a turn. Yep. All is looking well and good. So let's go back to my home view. That's the start of the train. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring on out... Um, let's have a look. The link arm. Okay. So linkage arms are going to connect these two wheels up with one another. So we need two of these. One goes there. We'll just chuck another one over there. Press escape. And we're also going to bring out the linkage pegs. Click on open. We're going to need four of them. So one, two, three, and four. Then press escape. Okay. So we've now got all these ready to roll. What we're going to do is we're going to do the constraint the same way. Okay. And basically we need to get this little section here to connect to this little knob on the wheels. So let's click on the insert option again. Click on this small part of the circle here and then click on the zoom in this section just here. Okay, and that works our linkage arm onto our wheel. Okay, apply that. If I just close that and zoom back out, it's attached to this wheel, so it's going to turn, but it's not attached to this wheel yet. So we've got to get these attached. A little bit harder to do now that it's in position. We'll just go back to constrain and zoom in a bit here. We need to get this back inner part of the circle and attach it to, zoom back out a bit, this inner part here and apply it. Just close that. Now if we zoom back, let's give this a test run. We'll see if these wheels are going to be turning at the same time. They seem to be going good. You see how it goes a little bit funny there? We're going to fix that in a moment. Okay. Should be moving at the same time, in the same position each time. But at the moment it's not quite doing that. It's close. But it's a little bit of a glitch. And we'll get that right shortly. Okay, next thing to do is get these pegs put in to these little holes here. Well, these are easy ones. The pegs are usually pretty easy. So zooming in on those pegs, let's constrain them. Choose the insert option again and get underneath the head of the peg there. So you want to select that little circle. Zooming out, we'll come down and we'll put it inside there. Easy. Apply that. Let's look for the next peg. So we can click on the underside there. Zooming back out, we'll go over this other hole and just stick it in that little gap. Apply that and click close and you've now got that side of the train whoops, side of the train done. Okay. As I said before, we'll fix up that issue where that little linkage arm goes a bit skew if, but for now that's looking pretty good. Let's do the same on the other side. Okay, the first thing you want to do is get our link arm, linkage arm, attach to those little knobs. So constrain it, choose the insert option. Select the back side of the circle there, and zooming in, we'll select this part just here. Apply that, come across, and let's get these two selected. So well, this is going to be a bit hard because they're so close to one another, but give it a go. Let's select that back side there, and select that little bit there. There we go, we've got them, so we'll apply that. Zooming out now, we just got to get these little pegs in the right spot. So select the underside of the peg, stick it in that little hole just there. Okay, do the same for the other peg. You might need to zoom in a bit. Make sure you apply after each one as well. 
Let's click underneath the little hat, come around and stick it in that small hole there. Click apply, close that up. Okay, so now you've got the other side done. You'll notice that the wheels aren't turning at the same time though. These two on this side do, but the two on the other side don't. We're going to fix that in a moment as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. All right, to get these wheels turning at the same time, a little bit fiddly this, but let's give it a go and we'll see what we can do. We need to go over to wheel one over here in our assembly and just expand that folder and then expand the origin. And we're just going to hover over these planes until we find the vertical one. And in this case, it's the XY um, plane. So what I'm going to do is just right click on that go to visibility and just click it. Now we can see the XY plane on all of our wheels. Okay, so that's going to come in handy in just a moment. Okay, what we're going to do now, I might just swing this around. So it's just sitting nicely like that up the top. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go up to the constrain feature here. And back in constrain, we're going to choose angle this time. And for the solution, we're going to select this one here, the first option, I think it's the direct, direct angle or something it's called, the directed angle is what it's called. If you hover over it, there it is, directed angle. And all you need to do is go and select one angle and two angles. And that links them together. So click apply. And now when you turn the wheels, that linkage arm should stay spot on. Okay, it's not going to have that little glitch where it stuffs up. I want to do the same for this side. So keeping that angle selected and the directed angle selected, click on that plane, come and click on this other plane and apply them. Close that off now. Let's go back to home here. Now when I turn the wheels, we shouldn't see any issues with that arm. Okay, it's working perfectly. Try the other side. It's looking good. We don't have any glitches anymore. Now it'd be nice if we can get all four wheels going at the same time. Okay, so to do that, it's not too much different. I might just get this arm up the top, go around the other side, get this arm, oh it's bright, down the bottom, like so. So one at the top, one at the bottom, like that. And I'm going to go back to the constraint option here. Yet again, we're going to choose that second option that's the angle and choose the directed angle once again. And this time, we're just going to choose the two planes up the front. So that one and this one over here. Apply that, close it up, give it a test run. Now when we turn the wheels, we've got all four of them moving at the same time. Okay, just to hide these planes, just right click on this plane and just turn its visibility back off. You'll see it a bit better. All those wheels now moving at the same time. All right, so that's the hardest stuff done and out of the way. Okay, so let's do some of the easy stuff now. Uh, we're going to go up to place. Let's bring in the chimney. Okay, now the chimney, just press escape once you press it once, goes in that hole just there. Now I don't really like the color of this chimney. I want it a little bit different. So I'm going to highlight it and go up to my appearance panel at the top here. I kind of want a more oh, grey or a charcoal kind of colour. I might type in grey and see what options we've got. Grey looks good. Smooth grey looks alright. I wonder what black options they give us. Plenty of black options there as well. So really up to you what you pick. I think I'm going to go with the grey. It looks a little bit more realistic. I'll just choose the normal grey. Close my appearance panel off. And you've now got a different coloured chimney. So if you want to change the colour of anything, it's just a matter of highlighting it and going back to the appearance panel like usual and changing the colour of it. Okay, the chimney's an easy one to do. All we need to do is go to Constrain. Um, where did that little window go? There it is. Make sure we're choosing the fourth option again. Okay, so the Insert option. And looking down on top of that train, you want to choose the inside of that circle, so that flat base. And then back over here with the chimney, look underneath it and choose his flat base. And then you'll see the chimney sitting inside 
there. So click OK. So that's looking good. He's stuck in there. All right. Uh, next one around the back. What have we got around the back? We've got those little magnets. Um, so if we go to place, they're called the hitch peg and the hitch magnet. Okay, it allows you to carry um, or attach carriages to the train. So open both of them and we just put them in once and press escape. Now, zooming in on them, they are quite black. I might even change the appearance of them very quickly as well to something a bit, a bit more grey. What have we got? Go a, a smooth grey. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks a bit better. We'll roll with that. Okay, first thing you want to do is connect these two to one another. So I'm just going to look underneath, constrain. Remember to choose the insert option here. Just choose underneath the little hat of that peg and then choose the inner circle just here. That gets them all attached. And click OK on that. We'll just zoom out and see where we're at for a moment because they're a fair way away from one another at the minute. So I might just bring these over a bit closer to the train. So now, if we just swing this around, we basically want to get this underside here to fit in that hole there. This shouldn't be too hard. Let's see if we can get it working. So we'll do the insert option again when we do a constraint. Click on the inside there, click on the inside there, and OK. We've now got our little magnet there attached at the back. So the train's looking really good now. I think we just need to put the cow catcher on the front. Okay, and this bit can be a little bit hard if you've done your measurements wrong. I'm trying to get it to fit perfectly into those three holes. Okay, so let's go to place and look for our cow catcher. Just stick in one cow catcher and press escape. Okay. I have to swing it around a little bit here. I'll bring it over this way a bit. You can see we've got three pegs that need to go into those three holes. So we'll start with just one peg. Let's go with that top one. I'll zoom in a bit. We'll constrain it. I'm going to pick the insert button again. And we're going to choose this bit here. Okay, that attaches to the cow catcher. And then we come back around, looking in this top one. We want it to go, um, I think it's that one there we want it to go on to. We'll click apply. We'll just close that box for a moment. Now that's not finished, but should be in a good position, which is pushed up against the train. So that's looking pretty good for starters. What you can do though, is actually move it around. Okay, we haven't put in those other pegs yet. You only really need to put in one more peg and then it will, put, it will be stuck in. So let's look underneath here. And we'll constrain this peg. Oops, we've got to choose our insert option first. So constrain that peg in the same way into that hole. Click OK. And now that we've got two out of those three pegs put in there, we shouldn't be able to pick that up or move it around. OK, so that fits nicely. If you're worried that that doesn't fit very nicely um, and it's not connecting properly, you might need to go to this front view here and go to your view up the top change the visual style to wireframe. You can actually see my three pegs fitting nicely into those holes. If you could see more than these double circles, then you'd know that your peg is not fitting nicely into those grooves. Okay, and you've got your measurements wrong somewhere in the previous tutorials. So I'll just change that visual style back to realistic. And I think we're pretty much done. That is our 3D modeled train. All working, wheels moving perfectly in time. If you got this far, congratulations, you are finished. Save it up and you're done.